As the U.S. proxy war against Russia and Ukraine continues, as the U.S. continues fueling conflict in the Middle East, it also continues cultivating a growing confrontation with China in Asia Pacific, and more specifically in regards to Taiwan. Now, uh, for the new year, Chinese President Xi Jinping made uh, a statement regarding Taiwan and the ultimate peaceful reunification of Taiwan with the rest of China. And I want to talk about the way the Western media covered that statement and how they're talking about the upcoming elections uh, on Taiwan later this month, January 2020. Four. So let's go to the BBC first. This article, Taiwan and China will surely be reunified, says she in New Year's Eve address. The article says Chinese President Xi Jinping in his annual New Year's Eve address reiterated his claim that Taiwan would surely be reunified with China's message comes ahead of Taiwan's crucial 13th January elections that will determine the island's cross-strait policy for the next four years. Though what they're talking about is the Democratic Progressive Party, uh, currently headed by Tsai Ing-wen, and the Kuomintang Party. Uh, these are the two primary parties uh, involved in the election. The KMT seeks a more pragmatic and uh, practical approach to the mainland of uh, the rest of China. They want to gradually reunify over time or at a minimum maintain the status quo. The DPP has been vocally and aggressively pursuing separatism with Washington's backing. And it is Washington, uh, is, it's in Washington's best interest that the DPP wins this election. And that is what we will see the Western media promoting. Now back to the BBC article. China has ramped up military pressure on Taiwan ahead of the elections. It sees the self-ruled island of 23 million as a breakaway province that will eventually be under Beijing's control. Taiwan considers itself distinct from the Chinese mainland with its own constitution and democratically elected leaders. Now, all of this is entirely and very deliberately dishonest the way the BBC is presenting this. The BBC is British state media. The British government itself has an official position on the status of Taiwan in regards to the rest of China. Why don't we take a look at that official position just to understand to the degree with which the BBC is deceiving us deliberately. This is the British Parliament's House of Commons Library, Taiwan, History, Politics, and UK Relations. This was published uh, last year, August 2023. And it says, the People's Republic of China's One China Principle asserts that Taiwan is an integral part of China, and as part of this, that other countries must only maintain official diplomatic relations with itself. It also opposes Taiwan's participation in international organizations. Now listen to this part very carefully. The United Kingdom, like most other countries, does not recognize Taiwan as a state, nor does it maintain formal diplomatic relations with the island. It is not a country. There is no British embassy in Taiwan. Taiwan is a part of China, as per the UK's One China policy. Let's see what the United States says about this. This is from the official United States Department of State website, state.gov, US relations with Taiwan. This was uh, last updated on May 28th, 2022. And it says, the United States' approach to Taiwan has remained consistent across decades and administrations. The United States has a long-standing One China policy, which is guided by the Taiwan Relations Act, the three U.S.-China joint communiques, and the six assurances. We oppose any unilateral changes to the status quo from either side. We do not support Taiwan independence, and we expect cross-strait differences to be resolved by peaceful means, which is none of America's business. But the key takeaway here is 
we do not support Taiwan independence. Taiwan does not have independence. It is not a country. And elsewhere in this statement, they talk about the American Institute in Taiwan. That is where the U.S. government interfaces with their, frank, to be frank, their client regime in Taipei. There is no U.S. embassy in Taiwan because Taiwan is not a country. So why would you have an embassy someplace that is not a country? The U.S. already has an embassy in China, elsewhere in China. While we're looking at the U.K. and the U.S., we might as well look at Australia, the Ah, uh, in Akis, this is the Australian government, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Australia-Taiwan relationship. Uh, Akis being a specifically anti-China block made up of the US, UK, and Australia. And, and a, a key part of this is their claim that they, they need to help defend Taiwan from China. But what does the Australian government actually say about Taiwan and its status. It says, the terms of our joint communique dictate the fundamental basis of Australia's one China policy. The Australian government does not recognize the Republic of China. That is what the government in Taipei officially calls itself, the Republic of China, because even in Taipei, they recognize Taiwan as part of China. They just see themselves as the sole legitimate government of all of China, which I, I think we could all agree is utterly absurd. It says the Australian government does not recognize the Republic of China as the sovereign state and does not regard the authorities in Taiwan as having the status of a national government. So very clear, the UK, the US, Australia, uh, all three members of AUKUS, recognize Taiwan as part of China officially. Unofficially, they encourage independence and they're maneuvering Taiwan into the middle of a conflict between the US and its allies and China, the rest of China. Considering how important it is to understand that, considering how most people in the West do not know this, it is very troubling, but also very telling, and I don't think surprising at all, that this BBC article does not mention that anywhere in the article. It does not talk about how Taiwan is not actually a country. They're very ambiguous about that. They want the general public, and the BBC isn't the only one doing this. They want the general public to imagine that Taiwan is somehow a country, that China is bullying it, and that the West is standing up in its defense, when it is actually the West precipitating a conflict with China by meddling within its, its borders, encouraging separatism and, create, and, and violating international law all while doing so. So the BBC article briefly mentioned the elections. There's another article from Reuters. Taiwan president says ties with China must be decided by will of the people. Um, a fair enough sentiment at face value. Uh, the article says, Taiwan's relations with China must be decided by the will of the people and peace must be based on dignity, President Tsai Ing-wen said. After China's leader Xi Jinping said reunification with the island is inevitable. China has been ramping up military pressure to assert its sovereignty, sovereignty claims over democratically governed Taiwan, which on January 13 holds presidential and parliamentary elections. So here, Reuters is also doing it. They're pretending that Taiwan is somehow a country, that China is imagining it, it, it has some sort of claim over Taiwan when the United Nations recognizes Taiwan as part of China the US, the UK, Australia, and virtually every other country on earth recognizes Taiwan as part of China. And the People's Republic of China in Beijing as the sole legitimate government over all of China. The article also says, this is taking the joint will of Taiwan's people to make a decision. After all, we are a democratic country, she said. However, Democracy is a process of self-determination. Tsai Ing-wen of the Democratic Progressive Party, all of the decisions and policies that they uh, discuss and implement are not determined by the people living in Taiwan or anywhere else in China. It is all being determined in Washington. The Democratic Progressive Party is a product of Washington's interference 
in Chinese internal political affairs, more specifically on the island province of Taiwan. And we know this, we have evidence of this uh, going back many years. So we have WikiLeak cables like this one. Uh, Taiwan's new vice premier Tsai Ing-wen, biographic information. This was from January 2006. And this is by the AIT director. So every time they talk about the director, they're talking about this fake US ambassador to Taiwan, uh, uh, this de facto embassy and this de facto ambassador. And this entire cable is singing Tsai Ing-wen's praises. And it's not because they think she'll be a great puppet sometime in the future when she finally becomes president of Taiwan. It's because she's already dutifully reporting to the, the Americans, uh, explaining and divulging all of Taiwan's internal political affairs to the Americans and inviting the Americans to become involved in them. And it says, this is from the cable, it says AIT, has had regular contact with Tsai Ing-wen on economic, political, and cross-strait issues. What business is it of the United States, is the internal political affairs of Taiwan, if it was some sort of self-governing entity? It clearly is not. Clearly, what is going on in Taiwan is being determined in Washington. Uh, we have other cables giving us examples of Tsai Ing-wen reporting to the, the the Americans in Taiwan. Director's farewell call on DPP chair Tsai Ing-wen. This was June 2009. It says, the opposition DPP will issue a call for fairness in Taiwan's judicial system and uh, for former President Chen Shu-bian's immediate release from detention. Party chair Tsai Ing-wen told the director during his June 22nd farewell call. The party's Proposed referendum on a planned economic cooperation framework agreement with China is aimed in part at slowing down President Ma's bid to deepen ties with the People's Republic of China, explained DPP International Affair Director uh, Xiao, who is now the, the vice president candidate in the upcoming elections, by the way, also present in the meeting, again, with the AIT director. So this is the DPP reporting to the Americans about the most sensitive internal political affairs of Taiwan, the legal fate of senior DPP uh, politicians, policies regarding cross-strait relations, which should only be the business of Taiwan and the rest of China. But now America is being invited into this, these internal political affairs. Again, how is any of this Washington's business? Why is she telling Washington all of this? And, and the reason is because Washington is directing her and her policy. These are policies that demonstrably hurt the people of Taiwan, their economy, their local economy. These are policies that the US wants to see implemented for Washington's best interests at the cost of Taiwan's best interests. Now, I know I have showed this many times before. This is Harvard University's Atlas of Economic Complexity. This is Taiwan. This is exports by partner. And you can see uh, with the rest of China, by far the largest export destination of Taiwan products. Products made in Taiwan uh, primarily go to the rest of China, almost half of all their exports and a large percentage of imports are brought in from the rest of China. And this includes key inputs to Taiwan's electronic components and semiconductor industries, incredibly important. And so Tsai Ing-wen, the DPP and other groups on Taiwan cultivating separatism and working together with the Americans to move away from the rest of China is going to destroy their economy. There is no alternative for the economic activity uh, that the rest of China offers Taiwan. There is none. And this is what the United States has done elsewhere. They've done this to Ukraine. 
they cultivated regime change in 2014. They overthrew an elected government in 2014. They put a client regime in place with Tsai Ing-wen's equivalent in Kiev. And from that point onward, they irrationally cut themselves off from Russia, destroyed their economy, and eventually they were maneuvered into a, a position where they eventually provoked war with Russia. And now we see Ukraine being destroyed brick by brick, day by day. And that is the fate that faces Taiwan if U.S. proxies continue uh, holding on to power and advancing these policies that solely benefit Washington and its uh, containment policy toward China at the expense of Taiwan, its people, its very existence. And speaking of Ukraine and the, the political mechanisms and organizations the U.S. used to actually carry out regime change, primarily uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, it's not hard to find uh, information about Tsai Ing-wen's relationship with the National Endowment for Democracy. This was 2023, just last year, July. That is Damon Wilson, the head of the National Endowment for Democracy, giving uh, Tsai Ing-wen the NED Democracy Service Medal. Just take out the word democracy, the NED Service Medal. Uh, is much more accurate. This is the actual uh, website of the Taiwan government, news and activities. So this was 2022. President Tsai Ing-wen meets U.S. National Endowment for Democracy uh, President Damon Wilson. And we know that the National Endowment for Democracy is an organization that solely engages in regime change and builds up US client regimes around the globe. So the only reason you would talk to the NED is if you needed help getting into power or they wanted to build up your political capacity so that you could serve as a more useful proxy for US uh, foreign policy objectives around the globe. Uh, and if we go and look at the board of directors of the NED, and I know I've pointed this out many times before, you will find people who have been directly involved in U.S. regime change operations around the globe. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see Ann Applebaum, uh, uh, who, who regularly wrote articles for the Washington Post in support of U.S. regime change around the globe. You also have people like Scott Carpenter, who is actually part of the interim government of Iraq after the U.S. Uh, murdered or expelled Iraq's actual government following the 2003 invasion. He was like a modern day viceroy, this white guy walking around Iraq as part of some interim government. So that, that is what the NED actually is. And uh, one more interesting profile you will find on the NED's website is that of Ambassador Victoria Nuland, who was directly involved in regime change in Ukraine. So this connection between the NED and Taiwan is very important to keep in mind. The NED has actually set up an entire institution in Taiwan, the Taiwan Foundation for Democracy. It is, is, is essentially a subsidiary of the NED located in and openly in Taiwan. And it continues building up a political system that serves the U.S. And yet the people in Taiwan don't know this because the media is completely controlled by U.S.-backed uh, media interests. The education system has been uh, infiltrated and manipulated to expunge any sort of discussion of Taiwan's connection with the rest of China. And this is how they, they build up in the minds of people in Taiwan that somehow separatism is in their best interest when, again, if you, if you just look at f facts and figures, uh, Taiwan pursuing separatism is going to completely destroy their economy at a minimum and at worst, it will precipitate a war that could scour all life, industry, and infrastructure off the island itself, which U.S. policymakers have admitted in many of their policy papers. So I just thought I would do this video about Taiwan, show you how the Western media is covering both Chinese President Xi Jinping's uh, announcement regarding Taiwan uh, on New Year's Eve, and also how they're talking about this election. When you know the actual real status of Taiwan, and that the collective West officially recognizes it as part of China, 
but then you see them playing this double game where they're also encouraging separatism in violation of that agreement and also in violation of international law and violation of Chinese national sovereignty and its territorial integrity, then you can understand who is really at the heart of these tensions, who is causing the problem, and who is simply responding to acts of aggression and interference within their own internationally recognized borders. I will keep an eye on this uh, up until the elections, and then, of course, we will talk about the fallout of those elections afterwards. Until then, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing to my channel. It's free to do, and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find follow my work. I highly suggest you follow me on Telegram. I am most active there. In the video description below, you will find all of the links that I referenced in this video, including all of those WikiLeak cables. There are also ways you can help support my work listed in the video description below. I do not monetize my YouTube channel or any of my other social media platforms. You can uh, skip past ads. They're not doing me any good. If you do want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee and also through Patreon. And to everyone who has been helping out, whether it's a one-time donation, donations month to month, or even if you're just sharing my work with others online, I greatly appreciate all of that. That is what makes this work possible. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.